Awesome. So excited to be with you guys tonight. Of course, the topic is win any argument. And so as we just discussed, we're going around the room. If you can just blurt out one of the last arguments or lost sales. Again, when we say argument, we're not, we're not talking about a cutthroat environment. We're simply referring to you and somebody else didn't agree on the same topic and you had a conversation about it. Okay. So Pat, I would, I would love to hear your example. Uh, my husband and I just installed a step-in shower and we really didn't talk about it before. Um, so when the gentleman was here to ask the specifics, he was given one answer and I was given another. <laughs> okay. I mean, it didn't result in an argument, but uh, yeah, we no, certainly didn't have it pre-planned. <laughs> that's, that's a perfect example. Thank you for sharing. And again, you know, when we say argument, what we're saying is, again, belaboring your point. So you might not agree or you might not have the exact same understanding that's really what we're talking about. Um, who wants to go next? Screw it, I'll go. I'm trying to, uh, trying to fully grasp and think of this one, but I guess a lost sale. Um, cool. I had this guy in the pipeline, relatively higher earner. Uh, he was like my age, probably making you know four or 500K a year and had him through my process on the life insurance side. Mm -hmm. And he fell out of the process. He was tough to get a hold of. Then he came back in. We finally like got him to the finish line and then showing him numbers like he was unable to justify, you know, some some small things in terms of like short term liquidity loss, some different moving parts that like 100 percent was willing to like negotiate and all that stuff on that side. But it seemed like he got immediately close minded to it. And I guess I didn't do a good enough job building rapport throughout the process since it was like a segmented process to right. where we just kind of put a hold on it. And, uh, you know, we had differing opinions of like, I didn't, I guess I didn't properly demonstrate the, the value of what the long-term benefits could be for him. Okay. All, that's a perfect example, by the way. So we, we may actually bring that literal example right back up when we go through this for one of the parts, because they, I'm telling you, man, this acronym, you get in another conversation with him, you're going to close the deal. Like there, there's just, this is such a cool tool and there's so much psychology behind it. Like this isn't something I just like put together on some note cards last night. Like I've implemented this for over a decade and it's personally closed, helped me close over $3 million in, in actual deals, like actual measured deals. So definitely be able to use that Antonio. Um, who wants to go next? And again, real quick guys, what we're doing, we're just going around the room and sharing the last argument. Again, argument we're defining as belaboring a point. You and somebody had opposing views. You had a conversation about it. So an argument or if you had a lost sale. So again, doesn't have to be super in depth, but but who wants to share share next? Yeah, I can go. I can right, go. go. Can you it. guys hear me okay? There's a little bit of background noise. Um, I guess like the, it, when I like, it took me a while to really even think of anything because I don't really, I don't know, like from an argument standpoint, a lot of times it feels more like a discussion. At least I try to make it more of a discussion, yeah. like seeking to understand and then making my point. But there was, there's been two situations like specifically where um, basically the, the, the business that Antonio and I own is inside of an agency of other business owners. And we all you know have a level of like camaraderie for each other. And there's like some level of competition, right? And we were doing a competition with us, our business and a couple other advisors and the metrics on how we track that, um, there was conversation going on about that, and and um, you know, some of these advisors have certain licensing that can get you know generate revenue to their practice yeah. over here. Other advisors have more licensing than others, and my you know and, and that kind of thing. So you you get that part, um, Keegan, right? So like on our end, me and Antonio's practice, like we're fully licensed across the board. We can do business in a lot of different ways for folks. And uh, there's a we had the competition that we were getting involved in initially felt like it was getting skewed to the people that only had certain licensure it's like okay well we should just make that established up front as opposed to saying one thing and then so i guess that was the whole that's the whole preliminary part without trying to get too high too in the weeds about it sure. but i basically was just like look if, if we're about revenue to our practice and that's what this whole competition was about why will we not consider you know uh these line items of revenue as part of this whole competition that we're doing it makes absolutely no sense especially if, if a lot of our time is allocated to this area and it's part of our, you know, our bottom line kind of thing. So um, after I kind of, you know, explained that, it made a lot of sense. And I think everybody was on the same page. But at first, it, at first, it was kind of this uh, skewed perspective, I guess. But Got you. Great um, example, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Great example. I, uh, I actually experienced that myself. So I kind of I just like went. it took me back to that moment when I went through it, exactly what you just said. Um, love that. So 
Who wants to go next? I can go. Go um, for it, Jay. So this was at my old job. Uh, basically, I was a sales rep, so I would go into stores and try and you know pitch in, uh, you know the newest promotion or whatever. Uh, so I, it was a new thing we were doing. We were trying to get more space on the rack, and in doing so, the uh, store owner would get like discounts on products and stuff. And uh, the products that were coming in, they were all, uh, so the products that were coming in, they were all like products where if they if they did uh, not sell and if they were expired, they would get sent back no loss on the business owner. Uh, you know, he would just get a, uh, like a rebate type thing. So there was like no, no reason for the, for the owner to really not do it. But I guess rather than like really learning the reasoning that we were, you know, uh, learning the, like the reasoning behind us wanting to get that more space and, you know, why it actually made sense. I was just trying to go at it in a way that like, was like, Hey, there's no reason to not do it. You know, it's all like, if it doesn't sell, it can get sent back, but he, you know, he was like, okay, but if it's not selling, why would I give more space to that, gotcha. to that product, you know? So uh, I guess on me, like, I just didn't take the time to really like learn the, the, the product as much as I should have. Okay, cool. Great example. <laughs> Again, directly applicable to what we're going to talk about today. So um, let's, let's crush through this part really quick so we can dive in again, what we're doing. We're talking about a moment where you had an argument again, defined as belaboring two points that were not agreed upon at first or a, a, a previous lost sale. So um, let's let's wrap up. We only have a couple more people. Who, who wants to go next? Marlene. Can you guys hear me? Oh, I'll, uh, let's do Marlene and then, and then Tony. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you, Tony. Uh, just real brief, um, mine was a family situation very, very recently that went from zero to a thousand very quickly. Um, and so it never really, it didn't really get resolved on a necessarily a positive note. Uh, so I'm going to be very interested in hearing everything that's being said tonight because I expect I expect to gain something that will be very applicable to this particular situation. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Can't wait to hear about this one. <laughs> Tony? Still with us? You're muted. Here we go. All right. I'm sorry. I'm having a rough time over here. I'm trying to, I'm on the event break thing and it's, it's not that easy for some reason, but um, so I haven't closed any sales or I'm not in that line of business, but um, an argument that I had recently was uh, getting my, so I've been working out with my brother's friend as I'm trying to get more into the, the training world. And we normally agreeing to go at uh, 6 a.m. And I was like, you know what, why don't we go down to 530? Because by the time we get done on the workout, like he's rushing to get to work and he always complains about being late. I was like, why don't we just solve this by going half an hour earlier? And like, Dude, I need those 30 minutes, man. Like, I need those 30 minutes. And I was like, I promise you, like, you're going to have to just go to sleep a little bit earlier, but it'll, like, pay <laughs> off in the end. And we've been doing it for a week now. And he's like, man, I'm so glad we're here at 530 now. Like, it's so nice getting out. I've been to work early. And it was just, it just, you know, not a big thing or anything like that, but uh, it worked out nicely for both of us. So, yeah. There you go. Love it. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Anybody else want to share Vinny to pack uh, Ashley? Oh yeah, I'll go. Um, so I, I just started in the, the sales role, you know, about a, like a month and a half ago and I've been making cold calls. Um, so I had two instances where I, you know, made a cold call. I, I did my pitch. I spoke with them, uh, kind of vetted how much around like a ballpark of how much money they have to invest and then um, with one of them, she was a, a business owner and I set up a, like I had emailed her with a, a date and a time to speak and a calendar invitation and everything. And then never got an email back, but I wasn't expecting one. So then I followed up, like, I think just say this was like a Friday and we made the meeting one week from that day. So I think it was Thursday, the day before the meeting, I sent another email to follow up and, uh, the lady actually never, never responded to the email, never picked up the, like joined the, 
the conference call or anything. So uh, maybe it's not the same exact. It's kind of a lost sale. Uh, didn't really get all the way to the end stages yet, but uh, but that's so. So she kind of just fell off. And uh, another instance, I had a similar issue, but I actually got in touch with the gentleman uh, again today, and um, I I sent him uh, a couple of more dates and stuff. So basically, my point is, I I had to do a lot of following up with these cold calls in order to actually get them on the phone again and set up these meetings. Thank you for sharing. Might not be directly applicable, but I do think with your line of work that everything we talk about today is going to be directly applicable after you get through that part of the process, right? The cold call. Once you get through the cold call and you have the appointment, that's where this stuff is going to be applicable. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Vinny or Ash, did you guys want to share? Um, Well, honestly, my, uh, like if, if, if I were to share, it would be a little personal. Okay. You're good, man. Yeah, you're good. I don't want to go into that. So all good. If you if you're if you're comfortable, if you can shoot it to me privately, or if yeah. not, just yeah. keep it in mind. Okay. I will. Okay. Cool. All right. And Ash, talk- share? Oh, sorry, um, sorry. um, well, I just wanted to uh I have a um it's like a like a uh almost like a training guide. Well, well not like training guide, but it's like how to like cold call successfully. Mm-hmm. Um so if you want to shoot me a text, I could send you that. Um, because I was talking to this this kid who sells real estate, and he kind of gave me the um, like the rundown on how to cold call and things like that. So if if uh, you know the pocket, if if you want, I'll uh, shoot that over to you. Um, there you go. So. Magic. Let's make it happen. I love it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right, you got it. All right, Ash. I'm gonna give you a chance. You don't have to, but you want to share? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay, cool. So let's dive right into this. I'm gonna share the screen. Okay. So before we really dive into this, I got to be really clear, guys, what we are about to talk about parallels neuro linguistic programming. Often this may be viewed as manipulation. We are not manipulating people. I want to be very clear up front. That's not the purpose of this. Okay. This is coming from a place of understanding somebody, not manipulating them, right? Understanding. So I just wanted to be very clear there first. So. We started with this question. If everybody could kind of go through where you feel like you kind of lost the argument, you were belaboring your point with somebody and it wasn't necessarily picked up, you weren't understanding the person, you just didn't get the end result that you desired. Here's what you got to understand. When we go through this, there's two parts to this. There's the personal side and there's the professional side, predominantly for sales, okay? When we're talking about both these things, you have to realize The end goal is whatever you want to get out of this conversation, whether it's a closed sale, whether you want to go to a particular restaurant with your partner, like whatever the content is, it doesn't matter. That is the solution. This is how we get there. Everybody clear? Awesome. So (laughs) the quiet model, guys, don't be afraid to talk. All right. The quiet model. (laughs) Here's, Here's how this works. We're going to go through this. Now, this specifically is set up on the sales side, so we'll run through on the sales side, and then we'll run through on a personal experience. Before we do this, we're going to do a really quick exercise. I'm going to ask everybody if you can unmute your phone. I mean, I'm sorry, un- unmute your, your, your camera really quickly. I know there might be some background noise. That's okay. We're about to do a quick popcorn, okay? So I'm going to start us off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call somebody out by name. I'll ask them a question. And then as soon as I ask you a question, you got to keep a straight face and rapid fire a question to the next person. We're going to go through the whole entire group until everybody goes. All right. Again, popcorn. Your job is to ask a question. Do your best to keep a straight face. We ready? Do we need to answer the question or just ask another question? Got it. Yep. Just ask. Okay. Ashley, why are your underwear inside out? Antonio, why did you eat pickles for breakfast? Landon, is that Rolex even real? <laughs> Pat, what did you do today? Uh, Marlene, where, when is your next meal? Landon, exactly where are you? Keegan, where were you born? Jay, what's your favorite color? Deepak, why are you such a loser? That's harsh. Sorry, that's like one of my best friends. Okay, cool. We're good. 
Uh, Keegan, where'd your beard go? Who are we missing? To oh, there's two Tonys now. Tony, which one's real? Oh my God, can you hear me? We can. Dude, this is unbelievable. I don't know. What, I really don't know what is going on. Like, I got lost out, and then I was getting caught up in the meeting of what I didn't hear before, like the 10 minutes, and it was the weirdest. It was very odd. So I had to leave and come back. So did you ask me a question? I kind of heard you were going to start rapid fire calling on people. Yeah, yeah. We got. We just got to get Vinny, and we're good. Okay. Uh, shoot him a question. Oh, God. I got to ask Vinny a question? <laughs> that was a question, yeah uh about what <laughs> all right man, you're killing anything. me you're killing me I, I all right, so. he, he missed it he missed it so i can't blame him yeah i got i i know i know we got it we got to give him that one we'll give him that one but again guys here's the deal the reason that i did that it's a little bit funny it's a little bit awkward but how does it make you feel like do you feel worse after we did that or you feel a little bit livened up the point mm -hmm. is cool. the first step to this whole thing the first step is asking a question there's so much power behind this. By the way, specifically for Ant and Landon, if you guys are in a position where you have receptionists, people making calls, anything like this, when you're running a business, this is one of the most powerful things you can do for somebody that's on the phones to start the day. So literally I had a team of 15 receptionists at one point and every morning we would huddle together in a room and do this popcorn question thing, okay? So part one of the quiet model to win any argument is you've got to ask a question. Let me give this to a, in, in a different content uh, context. So if you were a parent, or even if you were a child, have you ever experienced a scenario where you just automatically came to an assumption either about your kids or your parents did it about you as a kid? That, you know, let's say a brother and sister, a brother and brother, whatever, were in an argument, and we just automatically assumed that one person was at fault over the other. Here's the deal. Whenever you come into a scenario and you just make assumptions, walls go up. People feel like they're being attacked. Again, you don't get to the actual end result of what you want. So number one, you have to ask a question. Now, a couple examples. So, Ant, you were talking about this situation with this guy, right? And so you're talking about taking him through this pipeline. I'm not talking about where he got lost, but let's say when you're having a conversation, he got caught up in those minutia details, the short term, you start with the question, right? Because we want to understand. So, hey, no problem. Let me ask you this though. Okay. I'm curious what's behind this. Can you tell me more about that? These are some examples. All right. So Q question, understand. One of the best things you can do is put effort behind understanding somebody. I mean, I, I, would, I would venture to say that has anybody today or this week at any point felt like they were unheard? I'd venture to say probably everybody on this call, right? The truth is we go throughout our days and often we don't feel like we're heard. So understanding somebody is a pivotal way to gain that trust, okay? So- we ask the question, we bring the wall down. Hey, no problem. Let me ask you this though. Here's one of my favorite ones on the sales side. And this is a golden nugget. I'm going to tell you guys why in a second. Vinny, let me ask you this though. Was it the product or was it the price? Why is that powerful? Well, because it forces them to answer a question. Absolutely. It's not closed ended, right? It's open ended, but you give people options. People love choices. Here's the deal. Whenever you're going to close a sale, if it doesn't go through, it's going to come down to one of those things. The product, we either did not do a good job of showing the value or the price, which there are a couple factors that we'll get to that. So let me ask you, was it the product or the price? Oh, Vinny, it was the price. Hey, totally makes sense. Okay, so we've addressed the pain point. We asked the question, we brought the wall down and now we're understanding. Totally understand it's the price identify. So what we're doing here is we're moving from understanding to get to a yes. Okay. So we don't want to be confrontational. We want to, we want to be inquiry based. When we get to the identification piece, we are getting a yes from them. That's the whole key here. Okay. And if you're in the sales process, the more times you get them to psychologically say yes, the less no's you will get throughout the close. So when we say identify, again, 
We just want to figure out is a product or price. Okay, so, hey, Vinny, no problem. Let me ask you this, though. Was it the product or was it the price? It was the price. Totally understand. Totally understand. So you like this product. You know you would gain a ton of value from it. It's just the price is a little high. Is that right? Okay, cool. Yeah. I get you. I get you, man. So then when we get to empathize, we want to remove emotion here. So what we're, what we're really doing is we are stepping back and understanding somebody. Okay. Now, if we're in the sales context, we have to be very careful here because we, we don't want to, we don't want to parallel that line um, of, of overstepping like a particular boundary. So when we're empathizing, we remove the emotion and we don't want to empathize too much with their rebuttal because then they, they won't, they won't purchase the product. Right. So, Hey Vinny, was it the product or the price? Totally understand. So you like the product, you would use the product. It's just a little bit too much. Yeah. Okay, cool. Got you. And again, you have all these different responses here. We don't have the time to go through role-playing all of this. We're just going to go through this preliminarily. So you've got to this point. Now the walls are down. And then our next step is we have to test. So now there's no, there's no battle. We're not going back and forth. It's not confrontational. We're both on the same page. So now I have to use truth or logic to get them to see my point. Has anybody heard of the show Entourage? Yes. Yes. There was one point on there where he goes, I need to know what you were thinking. This is Ari Gold. I need to know what you were thinking so I can get you to think what I'm thinking. That's what we're talking about here, right? So when we get to the objection cycle, um, here's a little nugget. You agree, but use the truth or logic. And then you ask again. Let me stop really quickly before we go into the next part, because this is specifically sales. I want to come back and do this on the personal side. Any questions first? And I can't see everybody. So if you can just shout it out, if you have any well, questions. Just a, com just a comment that Entourage is like one of the best shows ever. Uh, it is. Created. It is. Have that's, you read that book, silly. by the way? I, I think it's called I The Gold Standard. No, I haven't. It's a book, yeah, it's, it's called it's the Gold about... Standard from Ari Gold, and I think it's the the actual wow. Ari Gold, not Jeremy Pivens. And that book is a fire okay. sales book, by the way. Really, Ari awesome. Gold. Is, check it out. Ari Gold is Ari Emanuel. That's his real name. Sorry, dude. His last name's okay. Emanuel. Yeah, his last name's Emanuel. His brother is Rahm Emanuel. He worked for the Obama administration, and his other brother is Ezekiel Emanuel, who was the Surgeon General. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. they're very ta very talented family. That's great. Thank you. Fun fact. Just learned something. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So any questions here on this, uh, on the, on the sales side specifically, we're going to go through top to bottom. Okay, cool. So somebody throw out a personal disagreement to me it can be anything. I don't care what it is. Just throw it out there. Where to go out to eat. I love it. That's what I was actually just thinking. You read my mind. Okay. So, um, all right. So let's, let's put this in context real quick. That was Landon, right? I thought that was Landon. Yep. Okay. Okay, yep, cool. That was, yep. So, so let's, let's say that Landon and I are sitting in the same room. We're buddies. We have this discrepancy. He wants to go to Olive Garden. I want to go to Chili's. Okay, cool. So, Hey, let me ask you this, Landon. Why do you want to go to Olive Garden? Over chilies. So those, those breadsticks, man. And the, the breadsticks. It's those breadsticks, man. You can't get those anywhere else. Oh, man, I hear you. I hear you. So so it sounds like you want to go to Olive Garden over chilies because of the breadsticks. Is that right? Totally. 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 Okay, cool. I'm with yeah. you, man. Good breadsticks, right? Yeah. So if yeah. chilies had the breadsticks, would you go to chilies? Yeah, I think so. I okay, think cool. about it. Man, I'm like really, really craving chilies tonight. What if we swung a, by Olive Garden and got you some breadsticks to go and took them to Chili's with us? Is <laughs> is that fair? Hey, we could we could do that. that. That burn a lot of time. So I mean, I don't know. What's what's it, what is it about chilies that you're craving so much? The steak. Wow. You get steak at chilies? That's crazy. I actually don't know <laughs> if you can. 
<laughs> I don't know if I've even been to a Chili's in my life before, but um, okay, cool. So that, that was a little bit of a silly example, but the like point that. is, again, like you want to start by asking the question, right? You're bringing the walls down. Now I'm understanding. Okay. And again, silly example, but he wants the breadsticks. I get it, right? They've got good breadsticks. Okay, cool. So again, this is where we're identifying and empathizing. So it sounds like you're being pulled towards Chili's. I'm sorry, towards Olive Garden because of the breadsticks. But if Chili's had the breadsticks, you would, you'd be open to going there. Okay, cool. That's the first step, right? So that's the quiet model. Now, when we go from this part, now we're going into the ejection cycle, all right? These are the five primary objections. I didn't do this for the personal side because obviously there are a billion different things that could be incorporated in this particular conversation. But I'm about to show you guys one of my favorite close techniques. I would love to hear who uses it because it's going to close deals. Again, psychology-based, we're about to do it. All right, so I can't afford it. Cool. There's a little nugget here. Has anybody heard of the drop-down approach? The drop-down approach is very simple. It basically states that if you are, let's just say we're selling a product line, you always start with the highest, most expensive product. Psychologically, the average person says no through the sales process seven times. So if you start at the highest product, by the time you get to that final no, you should not be at your lowest product. Okay. If people have three options, high, middle, low, most people are going to go in the middle. So if, if, if we, if we want to avoid this, a little nugget here is you start with the drop down approach. You start with the highest price or product, even if you don't think they can afford it, that's not up to you to judge. Okay. So, Hey, Vinny, I, I get it. You can't afford it or it's the budget. Totally understand. Again, we're going through this whole process here. I understand. So you like the product. You like the breadsticks. You want the breadsticks. I can see it in your eyes. It's just a little bit too much for the budget right now. Is that right? Yes. Okay, cool. Got yeah. you. The next, and again, different breakdowns for each of these. Um, too much for blank, or I wouldn't spend that much on blank. If you're, does any, has anybody got this rebuttal before? So it's, it's usually coming down to two things. Either one, we did not do a good job building value or they actually don't have the budget for it. In my experience, everybody can afford something. Now, if you're selling $10 million products, different conversation, but everybody can afford something that has a job, right? Um, okay. So totally agree. That does seem like a lot. <laughs> $50 for breadsticks, it, it does seem like a lot. But I, but I have a question for you. Can you think of anywhere else that you can get these good of breadsticks that you can eat every day for a $50 subscription? And of course, we're just making up random examples here. Um, then I guess you'd agree that, that the breadsticks are not cheap, but it would be a worthy investment, right? And then we start to do that drop down. We can show other products. All right, here's the golden nugget. I love this one. I'm going to share this with you guys. It's one of my favorite things. All right, so I call this the paper close, okay? You can, you can use this in the field if you're, if you're in sales. You can literally use this in a, in a debate with somebody as well to belabor your point. So, hey, look, you want to think about this. I totally get it. You want to make sure that you're making the right decision. Give it some time. Gotcha, right? We go back to the objection cycle. But there's something I want to share with you. Okay, so Marlene, did you know that psychologists did a study? They found that most humans only retain 4% of material that they have not heard, written down, or listened to again in 72 hours. So guess what? Here's what you know right now. This is the piece of paper. This is everything we've talked about in winning an argument. This is our quiet model. This is everything you know right now, right? That means by tonight, after we get off this call, this is, this is what you're going to remember, okay? This is what you're going to remember. Okay. That means tomorrow morning when you wake up, this is all you're going to remember then. And guess what? Two days from now, this is all you're going to remember. And 72 hours from today, after we leave this call, guys, and this is a true story. Again, I didn't make this stuff up. This is based by psychologists. So in 72 hours, this is all you're going to remember, the price. 
You got me? So why don't we take advantage of the monthly payments now? Instead of you trying to take all of this on at once, why don't we break this down into monthly installments? Here's what that's going to look like. Okay. Wow. Anybody have any that's questions cool. on that? That is really cool. That that's puts fire. a good visual. Yeah, that's a good one. It sticks with people. And again, this isn't just something I made up. This is actually backed by psychologists. That's just how the human brain works. So, you know, you're not fabricating anything. I mean, this is a true story. You tell somebody, this is all you, this is what you know now. This is what you'll know tonight, tomorrow, the next day, and three days from now. And guess what? When you go to have that conversation, the only thing that you will remember is the price. That's it. So, and then that's why we make it digestible. Now they hear, they feel understood. They feel heard. Yeah, you definitely want to take advantage of whatever it is. And, and look, guys, even if you don't have this in your company, you can spin this and you're about to see how. So when we get to, um, did I miss the, oh no, I need to ask. Okay, cool. So what I'm doing is fine. Okay. I hear this one all the time. Whenever, whenever I was in sales and you have a product or a service and somebody says, yeah, well, whatever I'm doing right now is fine. That usually falls on us in terms of building value. That means that we either didn't build enough value or we did not identify their actual pain points. Okay. How do we get to somebody's pain points? Asking questions. That's why you go back to the quiet model. You start at the beginning. You ask the questions. The more questions, the better. Okay. So um, this is specific to the, the a particular product. So it might not really make sense. But um, in this particular context, this was on uh, selling Cutco knives. And so, you know, we're talking about cooking here. So do you cook because you like to do it? or because you have to do it, okay? Do you do it because you like to do it or you have to do it? Again, we're asking the question, we're giving them two options and understanding, right? When we do this, then we can, and, and again, behind Cutco, there's a guarantee. And so I can, I, can, I can express the point of planned obsolescence, which if anybody is unfamiliar with that, basically if you go to Walmart, buy a product, it might last for two months or a year, then what happens? It breaks. And guess what? You got to go back and buy it again versus investing more money in a better product that you don't have to replace, or it has a guarantee that you can use at any point in time. Okay. So again, what you're doing is fine. Got it. We need to work on the value or address the pain points. But if we're, if we're already past that and we still want to capture the sale, Hey, look, I totally understand all my customers already use knives when they cook in the kitchen. Crazy thought, right? Some of them have done this for years, but the funny thing is they only receive results for those products for three months or a year, and then they got to go buy another one. Cool. Here's the next one. And again, there's, there's psychology behind this that I want everybody to capture. And you can use this again in sales in personal, whatever it is. You need to ask, they, they, they either need to ask their husband or the tooth pit fairy or Gargamesh or somebody, but they just say they have to ask somebody, right? Whoever it is. Hey, no problem. I totally understand. And our company does too. Let me ask you this. If your husband comes home and you say, hey, babe, I want to spend five grand on knives. What is the first thing that they will ask you? How <laughs> have you lost your mind, right? And, and here's the psychology behind this. And of course you can see this here, but the, the small psychology is when you want people to say no, or you want people to say yes, you can just do simple again, body language by nodding yes or nodding no. And what, and what is the first thing he's going to say? How much does it cost? Have you lost your mind? Right. And so when you get in that place, little cues, little cues, and then guess what? You're never going to have the chance to use this product because they don't know the value. They only know what? The price. And so how about this? How about we take advantage of the husband clause tonight? So all you got to do is put one fifth down today, test it out for a month. I mean, he's not going to be upset if you put down a refundable deposit, would he? No, cool. Let's go ahead and write it up. Cool. So again, as you guys understand, this is way different on the personal side because it's, it's not going to be as structured. And of course, we don't just have five primary objections that we can go to. In conversation mode or argument mode, 
it's going to be a lot different. There's way more to it, but you still want to go through the same process, right? So you've already asked the question, you've identified the pain point, you're understanding, you've empathized with that pain point by removing ourselves emotionally. And then you go back to the objection cycle by testing it out. So what are your thoughts? What are your questions, comments? Shoot, guys. I think I think a lot of this stuff too, it's 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 all it's all really good. And I think some of this too comes down to what Antonio and I will call like process mastery, right? Like getting ahead of a lot of these things. You can you can solve all you can prevent a lot of these objections and a lot of these things that can get thrown your way if you're doing your proper due diligence up front. But but these right. objections still happen even if you do those to do, do that due diligence. Antonio and I call it fake confusion. People yep. will give you fake confusion out the gate. Um, and then once it comes down to somebody, you know, whether it's writing a check or, or implementing something, uh, things, people start to become more emotional and, and, and lack and lack logic. And I really like that, that story of the, the, the paper close and the folding and the, and the, and the, and the, and the basically how you're just not retaining information that no longer, you know, time kills deals, people say, and it's, it's backed by science, essentially. Another thing I like to say too, and is, you know, typically whenever someone has to think about it, it's because they don't feel like they know enough about it or they need more information. Well, I'm, you know, I'm that source of information for you, right? Like that's what I'm here to do. So what are some things that you're uncertain about that I can clear up for you? Like, where's the, where's the confusion so I can create some more certainty for you? Like, I think the combination of like that, that dynamic of, of driving home, how you're not going to retain that information 72 hours from now, the same way you are today. Like you're the most informed you'll ever be right in this moment, unless there's right. things that you have questions about, you're not breaking up, you know? So I just thought that was great. So. And, and, and thank you for the feedback. Here's a little nugget based on you, what you just said, Landon. So let's say we're in that particular situation, right? And you get to the question part and, and just play, play along with me here for a second. So, hey, Landon, was it the product or was it the price? Yeah, I'm just not really like seeing. So wait, you want me to pick one or the other? Just pick the product let's, for this yeah, example. Yeah, let's go. It's product. I'm just mm -hmm. not seeing the value of the product relative to the cost. Um, yeah. Man, I must have done a really bad job. You know what? Let, let me do the presentation over again for you, okay? And, oh. and most of the time when you do that, people are like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, no, I don't, I don't need to see the whole thing again. <laughs> okay, cool. I got you. Right. So, so what is the actual problem? Where, where's, where's the downfall? What did I not do a good job of for you? Yeah. Um, and, and that just pulls it right back in, gets to the pain point, and then you go through the quiet model again. But you obviously don't need to ask the question at that point because you've identified the pain point. So now we're just going to understanding understand, identify, empathize, and then go back to the objection cycle. And there's times in our process where, you know, we've, we've debugged the fact that like we're with a decision maker, you know, we've made sure that, you know, if, if in our, in Antonio and I's world, for people that don't know, we basically help people figure out where to save their money. And it's a really personal, serious thing. So when you're working with folks in that space, you have to understand what their decision-making process looks like. It's just a part of that, and that you'll sometimes get to the very end and they still pull the They'll start off the conversation with, you know, I make all the decisions. My wife has nothing to do with this or my husband has nothing to do with this. Uh, but then you'll still get to that end point and they'll, and they'll pivot to that way. That's where in our world, just to do, just to, literally mirroring what you, what you just said, we'll basically say, Hey, look, sounds like we should just hit the pause button and kind of involve your, you know, your significant other in, in another conversation, because we want you guys to both be on the same page. And the last thing you want is for you to feel like you have to go regurgitate and reinvent the wheel and explain to him or her what we've just spent the last two weeks talking about. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. Are you scheduling these calls uh, via phone? It can be phone, Zoom. I like to do Zoom calls. It's more intimate, um, cool. especially if they're bring if they're bringing in if they're bringing in someone who hasn't been a part of the process at this point. I think it, it builds better rapport. That's of course, right. you can get That's to be right. in person, you know. And so there are little nuggets, and like, and you said this before, so I'm just reiterating what you already said. But you can do preventative measures before you ever get to that point so that you ensure you eliminate rebuttals. How would that be applicable to Landon's exact example? Hey, Landon, this information is super, super important. And oftentimes people will choose their significant other as their beneficiary. So just so she understands that information, it's going to be really important that we have her there as well. Is that going to be a problem or can she be there tomorrow at 4 p.m. as well? Yeah, okay, great. great. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I like to say this sometimes too. This is a little bit more aggressive, but... Um, our process is a couple, a couple meetings, right? But I'll say to like, hey, Keegan, so, you know, if I come back to you and with some recommendations some solution, and some solutions and this fits like a glove, what happens next? Yep. And I just wait and pause, wait for you to kind of let me know because that gives me a heads up on what your decision-making process is before I even show you anything. That's right. Yeah. You know? 
that was like something that was helpful. But someone taught me that a little bit, you know, when I started. So I love it. Now, now look, guys, I, I was a hundred percent commission based from age 17 up until like two years ago, three years ago. Okay. So I'm not in that world anymore, but, but it, it's a huge part of my identity. And so um, there's a little nugget that Landon just said, again, the person that speaks first loses. Here's the thing. A lot of people on this call right now are sitting back and they're like, well, I'm not in sales. How is this applicable? The truth is you are always selling yourself. You're selling yourself to your partner. You're selling yourself in your career. You're selling yourself to your children. Here's the deal. If you didn't consistently put effort into your relationship right now, and you just gave up, you stopped texting, calling, having dinners together, having movie nights. If you just stopped doing that, where do you think your relationship would lead? It might lead to divorce or separation, right? You are always selling yourself no matter what you are doing. So you have to realize that there are little things here that all tie together, whether it's a debate with your friend, whether it's, it's closing a sale, all of these sales things come together. Well, how can we apply this to the restaurant example? Look, if you have a partner, for example, that is difficult in choosing restaurants and you want to go out to choose a restaurant, you can, you can beat some of this stuff up front. Hey, babe, look, I know that you don't like to choose a restaurant that we go to. I'm going to give you a couple options, okay? So uh, are you, and that's where the question comes back and you go right to the quiet model. Are you feeling, are you feeling Mexican tonight or are you feeling um, Asian? Okay. Okay. Well, what do you not want? All right. What don't you want? Oh, okay. Okay. So you don't want to eat rocks. I, I didn't think you wanted to. That's a good start. That's a good start. We're making progress. Question, understand, identify, empathize, and go back to the test. Okay. So again, we want to bring the walls down. We want to understand people and get closer to that close. One more thing that Landon said that I think is extremely relevant because again, we're always selling ourselves, whether we're voice acting, whether we're, we're talking about dinner plans, like we are always selling ourselves. Here's the deal, guys. 10% of people will always say yes. 10% of people will always say no. 80% of people, it's up to you. So you've got to realize that if you had 10 opportunities in a week, you automatically can count one up as a yes. You can automatically count one up as a no. Eight of them are 100% on you. So when you go through little models like this, the quiet model, doing little things, those little psychology tips, that's going to get you closer to more yeses. Again, little things like nodding your head, body language. Did you guys know that body language is 55% of communication? 55%. Tonality is 38%. And the words that we use are only seven. That's neuro-linguistic program. That's not something I made up. That's NLP. Those are actual numbers. Now, I'm super interested to see how that shifts based on our virtual world. That, that data was taken 2019 and prior. But I still do believe that body language is an immense part of our communication, right? So body language, again, the average person says no seven times. You can avoid some of these things by little head nods. Hey, so that's that, that price isn't going to be a problem for you, is it? Nope. Okay. Here's another really cool one I'll, I'll share with you guys real quick. Um, let Again, people like options. So let's say you have high, medium, and low. And my handwriting is awful right now. I was trying to do this quick. So here's another little nugget. If you write the price out in front of somebody, and I, I love this technique when you're sitting with somebody, you can you can still do this virtually as well, but write the price out for them, right? So the high the medium and the low, the average person's going to pick the medium. If you really want them to pick the high or the medium, here's a little trick. And I literally would do this all the freaking time. You take your actual pen and you go, so, so which one of these three makes the most sense? Which one, which one of these three makes the most sense for you? And you literally point your pen to the highest option and you just keep doing that. <laughs> and they're going to, they're going to be like, huh, that high option looks pretty good right now. And even if they don't, they're going to the medium. Again, these are just little tiny body language tips that you can implement. Um, all right, guys. So, so any other questions or any examples that you guys want on the personal side that we can dive into a little more? I mean, this is this is an open, open discussion. So just fire away. 
Keegan on the personal, especially when it's family. Um, you know, we talk about high emotion, low logic. Yep. Um, high logic, low emotion. What is a good, solid method besides literally being quiet that would help turn a situation around and make that person feel like, yes, they're being heard? Um, Great but to question. get that emotional element more under control. Great question. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put this out and then I'm going to answer you. Thank you. It may feel a little bit awkward if you were to ever do this in real life, but I literally do this. Okay. Like if I ever have to talk to my girlfriend about something, I am literally going to take a piece of paper and take notes when we're having a conversation, true story. And I've got a damn good memory too, but I am taking notes for a couple of reasons. One, it shows them that you're committed. It shows them that you care Two, you're not going to miss anything. You don't want to just interject. You don't want to always be interjecting to answer, right? You want to actually hear people. So when you can sit down and take notes, people know you're listening to that. They know you care. Now to directly answer your question, here's the best way to do it. Ask questions. That's it. That's it. Asking okay. questions. So when we go back to the, to the chart, right? The, the first tip is question. And the reason for this is because again, it brings the walls down. So let's run through your example. You and family had a really tough decision to make, right? Mm -hmm. Things were not easy. Everybody was involved. Everybody has a different emotion or opinion. Everybody wants to be heard. That's tough. That's a stressful environment. The mm -hmm. best thing you can do is ask questions, but you don't want to just rapid fire questions for an hour in front of your family. You have to have yeah. direction and gumption behind it. So again, you ask the question and then you want to follow up with understanding them. Hey, so I, I, I noticed that you wanted to go this route for dad. Okay. Can you tell me more about that? So I can understand. Okay. So your thought is to do this because of X, Y, and Z. If I had to put myself in your situation, I, I could see how you feel that way. I, I really do. You know, you want dad to be closer to you. So there's a cemetery right down the road. You want him to be buried right next to you. I, I can understand that, right? You want to be able to go and visit. I get it. I get it. But <laughs> you got to realize that there are other people involved in this. All right. So it's not just me. It's not just you. It's not just mom. It, it's the whole family. And so what I'm really hearing from you is you just want to be closer to dad. Is that, is that right? Okay. That makes sense. I understand. I want the same thing as well. So how can we compromise so that the five of us can all be close to dad and all get what we want? Now that might not be the exact example. If you want to put out the example, we can run through it by the way but that's up to you. I know that that is a moment of vulnerability and it might be a little personal, so you don't have to share it. Well, um, in, in this particular case, it's the, it's the afterwards and, um, it's my brother. He's extremely highly angry, angry and volatile. And it's, it's, um, I'm the one that he's actually talked to, but I kind of feel like I've missed some steps and now he's shut himself off from everybody we can't reach him at all okay so, so can do you do you mind just that, elaborating? it's an extra challenge yeah go ahead do you mind elaborating just a tiny bit I, I understand that you know brother's angry what is it that he's angry about you said the aftermath are we talking about like paying for a funeral or or what are we talking like his belongings like it, what exactly uh, are we talking about um all of that went smooth okay um dad passed peacefully it was, it's the, he's, he liked certain structure and he was trying to say and do things that would help my mother get past her grief. And then of course my sister stepped in and he feels like he wasn't told. He wasn't kept in the loop through the years of all kinds of decisions. And what's happened is he's brought things from the past that he never let go of and he's brought it into the future. And I think all of us at times tend to do that when it's 
a highly emotionally charged whatever, mm -hmm. and especially in family. I'm sure a lot of individuals sitting here can go, yeah, been there, done that. Absolutely. So, and that's a, that's a tough situation, right? Because mm -hmm. here's one thing that I would, I would, I would offer up. You have to identify what the end result is. Okay. So brother, sister, mom, you all four involved, you guys have to come mm -hmm. to a decision. The funeral went well. It sounds like the, the aftermath mm -hmm. went well, everything went well. Mm -hmm. Love to hear that. Happy to hear that for you. Okay. So now we're in this situation where dad's gone. Emotions are heightened. We got to come to an agreement and work collectively moving forward as a family. Yes. I would literally set, I would, I, we had the boundaries talk before I would set yes. time aside with him and say, look, all I want to do is understand what your pain points are. I just want to hear you out. That's it. Okay. And then you go into, you set the day and time. You might show up to his house. You might call him, whatever it is, set that day and time up, go into that conversation and just use this exact model. Question, 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 question. Take notes the whole time. You know, okay. ask all the questions, take the notes. He is going to feel heard. And then guess what? At the very end, when you go through all your notes, you say, I just want to read this back to you to make sure that I'm hearing and understanding you. Is that okay mm. with you? Okay, great. And then you go through all the notes that you just took. So you don't have to remember it all. You go through all the notes you just took. Hey, I heard that you said this. Am I capturing that correctly? Or did you mean something else? Okay, great. You're not trying to emphasize your point. You're just asking questions. And again, when you do that and you come to a place of trying to understand him, he is going to feel hurt. I, I like this because what you're in this particular case, he has felt for years that he hasn't been heard That's and he it. hasn't been. And so everything that this perfect, thank you. Absolutely. Perfect. And so what you have to realize is your end result and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like your end result is that there's not emotional tension in the family and everybody can be cohesive, right. have good events, you yes. know, and feel like a family. Right. And so yes. if that's your end result, his is probably the same thing. Honestly, the problem is you both have different emotional interpretations of your past. Correct. And so he's coming from this place of, oh, well, I want the same thing as you, but I feel like I've never been heard. I've never been listened to. So nobody knows right. what I want. Okay. And, cool. and I'm obviously mom and sister are going to have to be the same thing Yeah. with the notes. That's it. Good. That's it. Good. Thank you. Very helpful. Good. Anybody else, any, anything else that you guys want to work through real quick? We're almost out of time so we can do one quick one and then, and then we'll wrap up guys. Look, if you got something that, that, you know, we, we went through the beginning and talking about all these different things, you know, Pat, you're talking about the remodeling, uh, landing that competition, like everybody had something. So if you feel like you've already worked that out through this call, love it, happy for you, but guys, please speak now. Like this is the time it, I want to help. Right. So other people on this call are brilliant. Throw out whatever you're working with. Let's run through it real quick. Anything? I mean, I, I just wanted to highlight something. I thought that's worth highlighting of what you're of, of something that I, that you're doing either consciously or unconsciously. That's really effective, which is like the whole mirroring and labeling concept when you're having disagreements with somebody or you're negotiating something, just, just being able to mirror what they're saying to you back to them is super impactful. Like if you're, if you, if you're like, if you, if someone says to you like, Hey man, I really freaking hate this chair. Like, Oh, you, you hate the chair. Like you hate the chair. Like you're like, but you're, you're literally mirroring what they're saying, but it's giving them validation that you hear what you're hearing, what they're saying. And you're also seeking to understand them. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's a, that comes from Chris Voss, Chris Voss's book, never split the difference. Mm -hmm. um, he was an FBI agent, hostage negotiator. It's a really, really good book. If you Very guys fun. have never read it. Um, but then he also talks about the concept of labeling all things that Keegan, you've been doing. I, I imagine, you know, consciously slash unconsciously through through a lot of the role plays and and just that labeling side it's another layer saying you're seeking to understand that person like oh it sounds like you want dad to be safe and you want things to you know to go properly or you, you want mom to be safe and healthy or you know, whatever that thing is you're saying it sounds like or it seems like you're not being you're not being presumptuous you're putting them in a position to correct you that's right to make sure that you're not you know not getting them kind of thing so beautifully said landon yeah. there's a ton of power in that and that's again 10% you'll close, 10% you won't, 80% up to you. If you can increase that 80% on the yes side, that's what we're talking about here. Mirroring and matching 
Again, a psychological technique that's been around for centuries, okay? I can't remember the exact psychologist, and I believe I said this on the last webinar, but there is this psychologist, and um, he was working with this guy, Jesse, who was an investor. Uh, Jesse did an investment in the stock market in 1930, which was, it was like roughly like $10 million or something. If you were to inflate that to today's standards, it was like a $100 billion sale in one day, $100 billion in one day. And so he did go on to all these psychologists because once he made that sale, he couldn't get back on the horse. He couldn't get fired up. He was like, man, I have nothing to look forward to because I will never beat that sale. And so he goes to all of these psychologists and they all turn him down. He, the, the guy's like, none of these guys make sense. They don't get me. He goes to this one dude and he sits down and he's like, you know what? He's talking to a psychologist, Jesse is. And he goes, you know what? I just don't have anything to look forward to. I, I'm just... I just don't know what to do anymore. I lost my identity. I don't get fired up. Psychologist looks right back at him and he goes, hmm. Well, I mean, it sounds like, sounds like you don't really have anything to look forward to. You don't get fired up about anything. And the guy, Jesse, looks back at him. He goes, man, this guy really gets me. They started working together, turned his whole life around. And, and that's the point. Mirroring and matching is so powerful. Now, one little tiny thing I want to be clear on, Landon, that you mentioned that's very powerful, the validation component specifically in the sales world, can be a very slippery slope, depending on the product. What I mean here is if you're sitting in front of somebody and let's say it's a high-end product, call it you know, $500,000, you're going to sell a 500K product. You got to be really careful on the validation side. And again, when we're talking about sales, I'll share one last story and then we'll close out. I'm sorry, guys. I love my stories. Zig Ziglar goes to do this sale and um, he was selling pots and pans at the time. You may have heard me tell this story. He's selling pots and pans at the time. There's a number one sales rep. This dude's been killing it for like five years straight, year after year, number one. Zig goes to him. He's like, man, I want to be like this guy. So they set up this dinner months out. The guy stops making sales, not number one anymore, losing, losing, losing. Zig goes to his house. They go to have dinner. This guy and his wife are making dinner in the kitchen. And Zig comes over and he goes, I realize you guys are making dinner. It smells great, by the way but you're not using our pots and pans. What's going on? And the guy goes, um, well, my son just got his license. He just drove through this fence. We got to pay to repair the car and we paid to repair the fence. My wife just got out of the hospital. We have all these bills backed up. I just can't afford this right now. You know, I can't afford to get our pots and pans. And Zig looks at him and he goes, so let me guess, every time you walk into somebody's house and they tell you they can't afford it, you empathize with them. And you go, yeah, I understand. And then you walk out without a sale. And Zig goes, so I left dinner. We had a great dinner. I walked out with a sale. <laughs> and, and so the point is, is not only do you have to believe in your it's product and have the conviction, but also you want to be really careful in validating people's pain points because you want to do it from a place of understanding and empathizing, not with relating. OK, because if you go too much to, oh, my God, yeah, you're absolutely right. You could never afford this. You're just closing the door. So it's a fine line of validation. And this is in all services that we provide, you know, whatever it is. You know, you got to be real careful on that. So um, but great points, Landon. I, I loved your feedback tonight. Any last minute questions, thoughts, concerns, snide remarks before we close out? Uh, no snide remarks, but you know, not being in sales, this has been really eye opening and good to know on the side of being sold to, you know, what to look for and to see, you know, the different techniques. It's been really good. And everyone sharing has been awesome. And also happy birthday, Landon. Happy uh, birthday, Landon. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I appreciate birthday, it, brother. Happy birthday, Landon. <laughs> awesome stuff. Thank you. Appreciate everything, guys. Of course. And so, yeah, on that note, really quickly, again, for people that are not directly in sales, and this isn't necessarily the, the, the exact same rubric, use the quiet model and just don't think about the objection cycle. So again, if it's a personal side, you ask the question, right? We want to bring the walls down. We want to understand what they're actually saying. We want to identify and get to the yes. Yes, that's your pain point. Understood empathize we're removing ourselves emotionally and then on the test we go back to pitching what we want whether that's a restaurant or whatever it is so hey let me ask you what's the reason totally understand i i can see why you feel that way um 
However, and then you go back to the close. Okay. Love you guys. Thank you all so much for your time. I appreciate it. Hope you gained some value. My last thing for everybody on here is because we did not get to role play this with everybody one-on-one. Here's the thing. This is not something that you're just going to do once and understand. Okay. I, um, even though I told you guys I didn't, I actually did make index cards. So I would recommend making some index cards for yourself with this process and literally writing down whatever your stuff is, whether it's personal or it's business. And guys, I do this all the time. Like you can see all this stuff is filled out. So make your own, or if you don't want to spend 20 hours creating index cards at the bottom of your PDF, there is a link to set up an appointment. I would be more than happy to role play this with you guys so we can go from start to end with your specific example, okay? Anybody in the group, I, I had, Ashley, I know you already set this up, but anybody else that wants to go through that? Vinny? Yeah. yeah. All right, brother, yeah. I'm gonna, I'll message you separately um, okay. and, and we'll set that up. Anybody else? Yeah, me, it's Deepak as well. Okay, cool, brother. Yeah, this is going to be directly applicable to that financial side for you if, if you stay there. I know we talked about this in the past. Um, cool. Anybody else that wants to go through that role play? Okay, awesome. I'll shoot you messages. I'm going to send everybody the recording of this. Thank you again for your time. If you need anything else, feel free to message me privately. Have a great night. Thank, right, you, thank you for everything, Keegan. Appreciate it. See you guys. Sure.